Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guy video on how to split into horizontal and vertical components using the rectangular coordinates feature. Well, you may be asking how to split what into horizontal and vertical components? Well, in the examples that we're going to be doing, we're going to be splitting a velocity and two examples with splitting a force into horizontal and vertical components. Using the rectangular coordinate feature, I'm doing this on a Casio Classwiz FX991EX, although it is possible to do this on any calculator that has the REC feature. Let's take a look at the first question. A particle is projected from a point on a horizontal plane with initial velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And what we need to do is to find the horizontal and the vertical component of the initial velocity. Now we're actually going to find both the horizontal and the vertical components simultaneously using this rec feature that's on the calculator. So let's access that feature. So it's shift and then the minus sign, so subtract. You can see REC just above that. And that will put on rec and then a left bracket. And what we want to input first is the magnitude of, in this case, our velocity. So that's 20 meters per second. And then we want to input a comma, which is shift and right bracket. And then we want to input our angle. Now we need to make sure that the angle unit of our calculator is the same as the angle unit that's given in the question. It is, we've got degrees here, so I'm gonna input the angle as 30, that will count as 30 degrees. So close the brackets and then press equals. And you can see that we're given values here for X and Y. So as the example is set up here in the diagram, X would represent the horizontal component and Y would represent the vertical component. And it's this way around because we have an angle that is a given from the horizontal. So we've got an angle there 30 degrees above the horizontal. The X value that we have given here is always the value that would be adjacent to the angle. And in this case, it happens to be the horizontal component. So we know that that would be 17.32 and so on. The vertical component, if we scroll right, that's 10 exactly. And so we've got that 20 uh, meters per second split into a horizontal and vertical component. In fact, we can go a little bit further with this particular example. These have been stored as X and Y in the calculator's memory uh, since getting them as results. So if I just press X and then equals, uh, then that will display our X value as a exact answer. So in this case, 10 root three, and this will happen if it's possible for the calculator to display that answer as an exact result. So in this case, 10 root three. And depending on what we needed to give as our answer, we could give this or we could give 17.32 as a rounded decimal. Let's have a look at a second example. This time we've got a force instead. So we've got a force of 50 newtons acting on a particle at an angle of 62 degrees above the horizontal. Again, we've got the angle acting above the horizontal. So the X result we're going to get is going to be the horizontal component. The Y result that we get is going to be the vertical component. And we need to use those to give our answer as a vector in terms of I and J to three significant figures. So let's access the rectangular coordinate feature again. So it's shift and then REC. It opens up a bracket. So the first thing to do is input the magnitude of our force. That is 50 Newtons. And then shift and comma. And then we want the angle, which is 62 degrees, close brackets and press equals. And here we have our two results. So the X component, which again is the one that is adjacent to the angle, which is the horizontal component in this case. So this will represent the I component of our vector. 
So you can see we've got the answer there, 23.4735 and so on. So if we give that to three significant figures, it's 23.5i. And then if we scroll across to the Y component, this will be the vertical component. So this will represent the J vector. So the J vector is 44.1. So if we put those together, we've got 23.5i plus 44.1j. And that's our answer as a vector in terms of i and j. Let's move on to a third example. And this one is slightly different, so we just need to be careful. So we have a force of 60 newtons acting on a particle at an angle of 42 degrees to the left of the vertical. And you can see that in the diagram there, we've got 44 degrees against the uh, y-axis there. So the angle is in a different position from uh, as it was with the first two questions that we did. But once again, we've got to find the horizontal and vertical components uh, of the force and give this as a vector in terms of i and j. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. Uh, the first way won't give the correct results, which is the, the way that we've been doing previously. And then I'm going to show you a slight adaption that you can do to get the results that you will need. But the initial way is going to produce some very similar figures. So we just need to be careful. So let's just input it as we have been doing. So it's the rectangular coordinates feature. And once again, we need to input the magnitude, which in this case is 60 newtons and then comma and then the angle of 44 the angle unit of the calculator is degrees so that's fine close your brackets and press equals now let's just take a look at these results um so the x that we've got here 43.16 well the x that's given here and this is why you need to be careful doesn't automatically refer to the x-axis and it won't in this case because we don't have an angle that's with the horizontal uh, this will in fact be the vertical component so the vertical component will be 43.2 simply because the angle is adjacent to the vertical rather than the horizontal you've almost got to imagine that the diagram has been rotated 90 degrees anti-clockwise compared to the two previous examples that we did and then the y here well that will actually represent the horizontal component but it will represent going left as we're looking at the diagram so it's 41.7 to the left which makes sense because the arrow representing the 60 newtons is going up and left as we're looking at it but if we were to give this as a vector as an i uh, vector we'd expect that result to be negative because we take going right as being positive and going left as being negative following the convention of the x-axis so what we need to do is just make a slight change to this now the results will be very similar to these but this change will be vital in terms of um, how we give our i and j vector for our answer so what we need to give is we need to give the angle with the positive x axis so against the horizontal with the positive x axis so if you think about what that will be it will be the 44 degrees plus 90 degrees so the 90 degrees that would represent that full quadrant that we have there. So our actual angle there would be 90 plus 44, so 134 degrees with the positive x-axis. Um, but we can even get the calculator to actually just do that for us. So we can input the angle as 44 plus 90 and close the brackets. And if we press equals here, you can see that we've got slightly different results, but similar sort of figures. Um, so our x, which is our horizontal component this time, is minus 41.7 to three significant figures. This is going to be our i vector. So minus 41.7i is going to be our i vector. It would be heading left as we're looking at it, so we would give that as a negative. And notice how that 41.7 was the result for the y, but positive uh, when we did it previously let's just have a look at the y result well if you remember this was the x result that we had previously which was positive and it is positive now which means essentially as we're looking at it the force is going up the vertical component of the force is going up so our j component is 43.2 j to three significant figures so if we give the two together 
minus 41.7i plus 43.2j. And that split that force up into i and j vectors. Now it's up to you to decide whether you think that this is a shortcut to splitting a force or a velocity into a horizontal and vertical components versus um, using a sine and cosine to do so now. It partly depends on the question that you get asked. If you're asked to show or to show a mathematical reasoning, then you must use trigonometry and show that you're using sine and cosine. But if you're simply interested in finding the actual values, then this is an alternative uh, method for you to find both I and J. Maybe you like this method, Maybe you prefer to stick to sine and cosine. It's entirely up to you. I'm just showing you another way that you can approach it. So comment below on whether you think this is a good method or whether you prefer to stick to a more traditional method, but it is a way uh, of being able to input one thing as such into your calculator and get both the horizontal and vertical components. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time on The Calculator Guide.